Hi everyone, welcome back to the Jansen Art Studio. Now, what I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about varnishing. First, what we'll do is we'll varnish up here a couple of pieces and I'll show you like on a tin tray and a wood piece and stuff here. And then uh, we'll move into another video where we'll do um, large, large canvas surfaces. So there will be a couple of different videos on this that you might want to look for. Okay, alrighty. So the varnishes that we have here in the Heritage line, um, these are 16 ounce bottles. These are pretty much empty because I just mixed up some more. But uh, it comes as a gloss and a matte. Now the gloss is really shiny. The matte is not 100% what we call a dead matte. It has still just a little bit of a shine to it. So, I mean, I really like it. I don't like a 100% dead matte, and I know it's very popular. But if you want a 100% dead matte, you put the, the matte varnish on, let it dry completely, and uh, then you just take a little steel wool, a little 5 ox steel wool, and you move in a little circular motion, and that deadens the entire uh, varnish down completely. So, uh, it's a wonderful technique. It's an old technique. It's hundreds of years old. We've done that for a long time. I've done it for over 30 years, and this works really well. So I I like the matte to have just a tiny bit of shine to it because it helps pop the colors just a little bit more. But anyway, so you have two. Now, which one do I like best? I like both. I like to make kind of my satin. And what I do is I take a very large container like what I have here, you can see glass, uh, gloss and matte. I take them one to one and I make kind of a satin varnish that I really enjoy. I put them in my own separate container. If you are going to use a container like this, Tupperware container, make sure that you always keep these rims really clean. Wipe them down with a paper towel because they'll, you know, you will get some varnish on those and then they're hard to unscrew the, the lid. So make sure before you, um, you know, you put it away that you clean the lid and stuff. But I put it in here about uh, one and one, uh, equal amount of each, and then I shake it up real well. And you can see I, I just mixed this. It has some bubbles in it. That won't hurt anything. We have um, a, uh, a medium that's in there that uh, that pops those little bubbles and stuff, so you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. So, you know, bubbles when you're putting it out on there won't hurt it at all. Okay? So, um, you know, it's... it's uh, it's, it, a lot of people worry about bubbles and stuff, and it's not really, if you have a really good varnish, you don't really have to worry about it. But if you worry about it, just set it aside for an hour or so, and those will pop. But I don't. I just shook it up really well. I mixed it up, and then I shook it up really well like that, and opened up the lid, and I'm ready to varnish. Now, what I like to use when I varnish is this. This is our varnish brush. This is a two uh, two inch. It's the fusion hair on it, synthetic squirrel. It is a beautiful varnish brush, and wash it really well when you're done with it. I watched a guy, a, a, a professional painter, and he said you should when you're washing your brush, you should wash it for at least five minutes or so. Um, don't wash it up underneath the thing like this because you wick water down to it, but you wash it like this in your hand for at least five minutes until that thing comes out completely clean. And what I do when I'm done with varnishing, what I do is I take out a little bit of extender, you know, extender medium, put it out on my palette here, and I dress my varnish brush into it. I just run my varnish brush through it after I've washed it. And then that keeps it, and then that brush will stay be nice the next time you are you go to go you know, to grab that. So it works really well. First, let me just show you some of the problems that you have with it. The varnish itself, when you use the varnish, okay, uh, is really thick. It is very thick. It's made to be thick so you can paint vertical set, uh, surfaces because we do a lot of furniture and I do a lot. As a matter of fact, I'm just starting to work on another armoire and I'm going to want to varnish it. And I don't always have the surface down flat to varnish it. Sometimes I'll be varnishing it vertical. So we make the medium really thick so it doesn't sag. It doesn't run down and sag. Now, to counter that, you can have out a little cap of water or you can have out a little spray bottle full of clean water. And I'll show you some of the different ways to do it. One of the things that, now this is just a regular matte surface. This painting that I have here is just regular matte surface and there's nothing on it. One of the things, uh, if you're, a lot of people are afraid to varnish. Now this varnish I'm going to show you is pretty foolproof, but a lot of people are afraid to varnish. And uh, so, and it is a little bit scary sometimes. And so what I uh, suggest that you do, and I don't have the product out, but here, let's see if I have it out over here. Yes, I do have it right here is a smaller one of it. This is the multi-surface sealer, okay? The multi-surface sealer is really kind of a urethane varnish. The varnish that we make 
the gloss and the matte are polyurethanes, which means they are very, very hard. They're very hard, durable. But the surface sealer itself is what we call a urethane. Uh, it is a protective varnish, and it it brushes on just like magic. There's no problems with it whatsoever brushing it on. There's never a problem with it and because it doesn't have that extra hardening agent in it. So it brushes on really well. So if you're at all worried about varnishing, protect your painting first with a coat of sealer and you can do that. I'm going to show you how it's not necessary. But a lot of my students like to give a coat of sealer first and then let that dry at least an hour or so and then go on with their varnishing and they never have anything to worry about because the sealer makes the varnish go on just absolutely perfect. Now one of the problems is this is a matte surface. It's matte. And I painted this painting here using, uh, and there's no sealer in it whatsoever anywhere, so it's matte. So it's going to want to drink the moisture right out of, out of the varnish when I'm varnishing it. What I do to start a varnish though, and you don't have to worry about it as long as you understand the varnish. To start the varnish, What's going to drink out of the varnish? Water. So when it, to start a varnish, what I do is I just dip my brush into a little bit of water. Um, and then I'll just go ahead and pick up some of the varnish here onto my brush. Now, what you don't want to do is just flood the surface of, the, of your painting like that with the varnish where it's really, really thick, where you get that cloudy look through it there. That, and I'll show you why in just a little bit, but you don't want to do that. What I like to do is just to work it in, uh, I don't work it in big long strips. I work it, I work the varnish in little strikes like this. And it's, you can see how it, it goes out really even and how it immediately um, gets rid of all the brush marks. There's a leveling agent in it, so it immediately gets rid of the brush marks and stuff into it. You don't have to worry about it. But you don't want to do this kind of stuff where you put this on. Matter of fact, let me blow it here. Let me put on a lot of varnish here real thick. This is what you know some of my students do right away. They think, oh, I've got to put, I want to lake the varnish onto the surface. Now, what you don't want to do is do exactly that. And you don't want to have too much water. If you put too much water into this thing, a lot of people just say, well, I'll put lots and lots of water into it. Now, I am really, I'm not, you know, <laughs> I'm not destroying this painting. This varnish is very forgiving. It can do a lot of stuff. And so I'll show you how we can fix all of this. It's okay. I'm going to really make a mistake here, though, with this painting here and do it this way here. And we'll put this on here and... We'll just brush it out like that. And then so they get this huge lake effect. And even with that lake effect, you'll see that the varnish, it's just laked onto the surface there, is starting to level out. You can see where it's starting even over here. You could just watch it just start to, to level out and find its level. And that's because of the, the leveling agent. It's in there and it's, it's made to do that. It is not really great, though, to lake that on because what happens is that that leveling agent and the polyurethane that's in it, they have a pulling action. And what will happen after a little bit of time, and it's going to start happening here, you'll see it start to pull and beat up. See how it's starting to pull and beat up here like this? Because the varnish is on too thick. So, and it'll start doing that, and it'll start doing it after a few minutes. You'll see a few holes here and stuff like that. I'm going to set this aside, and just to show you how, you, how we can correct it. That painting is going to be perfect here in just a minute. So I'm going to set it aside there, and we'll come back and work on it again in just a minute. Here's a tin surface. Now, the tin surfaces are one of the hardest things to varnish because they conduct... Where that one felt very warm, that surface, this feels very cool. Uh, it conducts a lot of the room temperature, a lot of the what's going on in the room that you have. A tin surface like this does, or steel. This is a steel tray here. Now, when you varnish, the actual best way to varnish is just a little bit of water, just a little bit. Put your brush in and then stretch the varnish out. As you varnish like this, I varnish in short little motions of the brush like this and I start to stretch it out as far as I can go with it. That's what you want to do. It is in any type of paint chemistry, any type of paint chemistry that you're dealing with, it is far better to put on two thin coats than one big thick coat. There's a little hair came out of that brush there. And 
so it's better to put on thin coats than thick coats. And and so this just starts to drag here a little bit. That's when I stop that area when it starts to get a little draggy. You can go all the way through this until it's completely dry. You can see I can go all the way through this till it's completely dry. If it bothers you and you get like a little dry edge or anything like that or you're afraid of something, you can just mist it with a little bit of water. And that just reactivates the varnish and lets the varnish go and do its thing. And I will continue on here. And but but you don't want to put it on thick. You want to stretch it and stretch it and stretch it. And if you need to, you can mist with a little water. I don't like to add water at, that often to it because that thins it out and gives it the the ability to pull against each other. So I don't like to do that. And I don't need to do that. See, I can work this and let's just, and I can work this just as it's almost dry. If it gets a little draggy in some areas, just mist a little water on the surface and it allows you to come back again. And you can see, even when I stroke that brush over, I'm not leaving brush marks on it. That's because the varnish is already leveling and this brush is magic conjunction with it. So at first I put it on really heavy pushing of my brush. Then when I go to, to my smoothing coats, I just lift up the pressure a little bit and just lightly drag over the surface. And I like it when it starts to get dragging, when it starts to drag a little bit. That's when I know I'm doing really well. And you just let that thing level and you can see it just all levels out really, really well. Now, I can, while that's even starting to dry, I can take just a little bit of varnish here. And I like to work the varnish. This varnish is very, this varnish is wonderful. You can work it, work it, work it. You won't pull holes, tear it up, or do anything. So you can brush it pretty hard. As a matter of fact, when you see the large canvas video, the varnishing, the large canvas video, I'll show you on that one just how hard I make that varnish really work. So I put this on all the way around even though this is a little tacky here you don't have to worry about it the varnish does not tear up i can come right over that with another coat of varnish with this little edge here and see it just reconstitutes it and just levels it out it works so well if if i'm at all afraid i just missed a little water but i don't have to i just push the varnish work the varnish you don't flow this varnish on you work this varnish onto the surface. Work it onto the surface and it'll give you a beautiful coat every time. If your brush starts to get a little sticky, you can add a little bit of water to it and that'll loosen it right up and make it feel really nice again. But uh, you don't have to. You know, you can work this, you know, all the way with real heavy, heavy varnish here. So I'll work that like that. Now, you can see that's just a beautiful coat on that, right there like that. Now, this is starting to tack up. Even if I put my handprint in it, just like that. Now you see my handprint in it like that. You you start to worry about that. You go, ah, you don't need to worry about that. Just mist it lightly like this, okay? And just come right back through it again, and it'll take that right out. And I like, I, like I say, I like to go all the way through some of the, sometimes I'll go all the way through the drying process of the varnish. Very, very, very light pressure. Just the pressure of the brush going over the surface. I like that sometimes because it just self-levels and gives you such a beautiful coat that way. You don't have to have be afraid of this varnish. It's, you know, the older varnishes we made in the 80s and the 90s, they picked up and they rolled and you created all kinds of problems. And, uh, you know, they were uh, just little nightmares. Uh, but since I've stretched this one out and there's no, it's not laked on, it's going to dry here really nice. I'll check it a couple of times as it's drying. But let's go back to this board. Let's see how we've messed it up. Look at how the board now has messed up. See what I'm talking about here? See all of this pulling because it lakes? Because I put it on so thick that it's just laked on there, okay? And that's created kind of a problem. Now, how do you go to, how do you go to fix it? Well, you can take your magic brush right here right, and go right through it, and that will do it. But it'll continue to, to lake a little bit because you have too much on there. So what I'll do is take a paper towel with a little bit of moisture on it, Sometimes I varnish with a paper towel, and I've showed that in other videos too. And I'm just going to pull through this whole piece here. Now it's been, and some of this has started to dry over here too. 
you know, it started to dry. But the water's going to reactivate this varnish for just a little bit. Not for, you know, you can't do it five hours later, but within, you know, 10, 15 minutes, this is going to be fine. I'm going to take off some of this extra varnish here like this, right off the surface here. I'll mist it with just a little bit of water here, just a little bit, because that's what's left. I'll reactivate the varnish just a little bit. Like I say, you can do this for, you know, 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes. Um, and then after that, you kind of have to like what it is because it does start to tack up. I mean, get too tacky where the varnish can't fix it up anymore or the water can't fix it up anymore. And I'll just go over this and you can see it's leveling it right on down and it'll dry absolutely clear. There's a couple of spots here where it's still a little thick where I didn't wipe it down enough. So I push the varnish around. This is where I push it around with my brush and I get that nice even coat all the way across. That's what I'm looking for is that nice even coat as it's drying down. You can see the edges out here starting to dry a little bit. And uh, even right here where it's like super dry out there and got a little bit of that beading out there, I'll just mist it and I just misted my tray too. So, But you don't have to worry about it. I'll just mist that lightly like this. That will reconstitute that varnish just a bit there, see? And then that little beading is gone, see? See how flat and nice? You can see that little beading is all gone there off of that. The other way is if you notice and it does beat up on you or something because you put it on too thick and that does happen you know because uh, you know life gets in our way like that and you can't get it down like this then you let it dry and then you just wet sand it and then you come back and, and, and do it again but you can see even after that I can come back even where it's starting to dry down in through here still doesn't hurt it it won't pull up a hole or anything like that all you have to do at any time is just mist it with a little water and you can come back through pick up that varnish and redistribute it and smooth and, and smooth it out a bit and get a nice flat even surface again all the way even though you had all of that terrible beading and it had already started to dry and all that kind of stuff now I just misted this with water in here it doesn't hurt anything I just come right back through it again this is such great varnish and you put it to, in conjunction with this super soft varnish brush like this. This is a super, super soft varnish brush. And even though this is a little sticky and tacky over it, I can go right over it with my brush and not hurt the varnish whatsoever. And you can see I get a beautiful varnish tray coat down on the whole thing there. And you can see there's no brush marks anywhere in that surface. See the glare. Watch the glare. There's no brush marks anywhere in that surface. There's no beating up of it anytime. Everything came down flat. Now, and it, this, the coat is absolutely perfect. Now, I let this dry. Sometimes I'll varnish within 30 minutes. I'll put a second coat on and go right for it. Sometimes I'll let it dry overnight and stuff. You shouldn't let it go past like 48 hours or so. If you do, then you should sand it lightly with like a 220 or something like that sandpaper. And why? Just because the varnish is super hard. And if it gets really hard, you know, we put another coat on, you know, there that it, it when it gets really hard, it's hard for the next coat to stick to it. Now, our varnishes sticks to each other really well, and that's really not a problem. But we, I always say, past 48 hours, always sand just a little bit, give it just lightly, just give a little tooth, something for the next varnish coat to, to uh, grab onto. But many times I've varnished a year later, a second coat just tossed it on, and it's fine because we do have a softening, a bonding agent in it, and, and it makes it all work. But uh, you can see you get a beautiful coat there all the way around there like that. And let's see how this one is drying up. Absolutely nice onto that one too, and that was nice and flat. There'll be a few little highs and lows. It was a little thicker right there, but see, it's not beating up anymore because I've taken off all the excess. It's not beating up anymore. So you get beating up when if you you'll get beating up if you use too much water in your brush. You've made the varnish so thin it just wants to beat up. You'll get beating up if you put too much varnish on the surface and get that lake effect on there because it's a polyurethane. It wants to pull and tighten onto each other. 
And all you have to do is just go right back through it. Take off some of the excess and go right back through it. Keep a little moisture in your brush, just a little bit. Use a little spray bottle around. Don't add too much water though, because water thins it out. And water thins it out so much you thin out the glue and you're making weak varnish. So don't, you don't need to use it. Just a little bit of water to cause it to, to work. And as you varnish with it, you'll feel a damp brush causes it to move really well. So you control the thicknesses of it. I use it a little, th I like to keep it thick because I can thin it really easy. Rather than having a thin varnish, I like to have it a little thicker so I can use it on my furniture pieces and stuff like that. And I just thin it with just a little damp, push the brush right into the water there, a little damp uh, brush, and it makes an absolutely beautiful surface. Now this is still just a little tacky here, but see, I could, even while that's tacky, I could take a little bit of this varnish and go right back into it again. Now our old varnishes that, that you know we made in the 80s and stuff like that, I would be picking up and rolling this varnish like crazy right now. It would go, it would all turn cloudy white, and would be absolutely horrible. Not anymore. These are today's newer generation varnishes. These things work like magic. I just add just a little bit of water to it because the surface is, is a little bit tacky and wants to grab it. So the water will cause it to slide over it a little bit. And I just put on, so see, I can do it right within 10 minutes or even f faster, five minutes, and put another coat right on top of that. You can see you get a beautiful, beautiful effect and you can build it up. So remember, it is much better to use just a little bit of varnish, stretch it out, stretch, 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 don't lake it on. Stretch it out, stretch it out, stretch it out. Move that varnish around, stretch it out. If you need to, you can you can mist it with a little bit of water. But I like to stroke with it all the way as this varnish feels like it's drying up and getting tacky. If you've never varnished like this before, take a just a board. Just take a board uh, covered with paint and try it, moving it out here and moving it around you can see I can stroke this lighten the pressure on your brush lighten the pressure I can stroke this you see I get a beautiful beautiful no brush marks beautiful coat this is going to dry absolutely beautiful when it's all done you can see how it wakes up those colors and stuff and it'll be a beautiful piece now I'll make I'm going to do one uh, video here where I do a large large surface I'm going to show you also how to do a large surface and we'll put all of these videos up onto our websites so uh, try to find uh, find that other larger surface larger canvas one too because uh, I do it almost the same but just a little different when I have a big surface and I'll show you how to do that okay alrighty Hi everyone, welcome back. Okay, now I'm showing some varnishing. Now we just varnished some trays and stuff back there behind, uh, behind me there. And you, I showed you for doing trays and doing wood. You know how you varnish. The big thing is don't use too much varnish. This is a very very powerful varnish. You don't need to use too much varnish. And the other thing that I, I'll just re-emphasize it again: how many coats of varnish? A lot of people just toss on lots of coats of varnish. That's not necessary because you just start to distort the painting. Uh, two coats is what I like to use. Two, sometimes three if I want to get more of a real gloss, you know, look to it. So I talked about some of that in the uh, tray uh, varnish. Just a real, real quick uh, recap is I use both the gloss and the matte. We have two times. I, two types, uh, the matte and the gloss, a shiny surface and a more matte. Uh, the matte has just a little bit of a shine to it, which is what I like. I like it because that shine uh, ref uh, refracts the light in, in throughout and wakes up the colors. It's not a complete 100% dead matte. If you want to do that, you use steel wool. And I talk about that in other videos as well. 5 watt steel wool. Um, but anyway, I just take it and I mix it up one to one. And I, I keep it in its own separate little containers here. I use Tupperware containers where I use a lot of varnish. I go through a lot of varnish. I'm varnishing all the time. Now, this is a bigger painting. This is a canvas here. Uh, one I did in one of my online classes. It is a matte surface here. It's going to drink up the varnish. I use the, this is our varnish brush. This is our two inch varnish brush. Tells you how big this painting is. It's, um, you know, it's almost 40 inches across or 42 inches across there. It's a big painting. Uh, it will drink the varnish. A lot of people think that your varnishes and stuff have to be wet 
all the way across to get a real nice uh, coat onto it. In a lot of the older varnishes, that's true. In the newer varnishes like this, that's not true. You can you can keep going. I'll show you how to keep a wet edge, but you can just keep going. Let's just start with this. I use I usually have a little container of water out, and what I'll do is I'll uh, just dip my brush just lightly into that water, just a little bit here. But I'll take the varnish out, and I'll put the varnish out like this. And you can see it's kind of cloudy here like this. That's because it's on there really thick in that area. And this is where I like to stretch it out. I work it, work it, work it in, in small X motions and stuff like this. And I start to just stretch this varnish out and stretch it and stretch it and stretch it and stretch it. And it will eventually go absolutely clear if you're stretching it out. But this is what I like to do. And work it work it and work it and work it work it so you don't have you don't put on a whole bunch of varnish here all at one time you're stretching it out and work it and work it and work it and work it here and you, know, you can add the thing is and with the other uh, video if you haven't watched the other video you should watch that other video um, if I thin this out too much and I lake it onto the surface, it pulls and it creates what we call that little alligatoring. It's it's breaking the surface there. And that's just because you've th you've thinned it out or put too much of it out onto the surface. And uh so you don't you don't want to do that. You want to work it like this and, and stretch it out and stretch it out. And so I'll continue. Now up up over here, it might even start to dry a little bit. You don't have to worry about it. Just keep going. Just just start varnishing it. Just start, you know, just put the varnish on and work it like this. You can work this varnish all the way until it's completely dry. But you notice here, it's all going on. There's no brush marks or anything like that. Everything is leveling out. And I'll just keep working. I work one little spot here at a time. Stretch that varnish out. Just keep going here like this. I'll go up to this one here. And so you don't have, this is, this varnish is absolutely beautiful. You don't have to keep a wet edge to it like we used to always worry that we had to with the older stuff. You don't have to anymore. You can just keep going and going and going here and put this on here. You can work this and work this varnish like this all the way through the drying process so you don't have to worry about anything here. And I can mist it with uh, water at any time. To keep it going now over down here it's getting a little tacky and stuff like that here which is, don't worry about it just put on a little more varnish stretch it out like this stretch it and stretch it stretch it walk it right into that one there if you're at all worried about it at all you can lightly mist it with a little water which thins the varnish just a bit and makes it even and let makes it uh, you know level out a little faster but this this already you can see it levels all out see how there's no brush marks in it and stuff and it's just a little bit cloudy because I had some water in it and that will dry this will absolutely this will dry absolutely clear perfectly clear you won't see anything with it but don't don't sit there and leave a whole bunch of it on like this you don't want to do that you want to stretch this out as far as you can here the varnish is a polyurethane it is very powerful it is, um, and if you leave it out like that, it'll pull on itself and it might beat up, might beat up a little bit. And I show that in the other, in the other uh, videos and stuff, sir, the other varnishing video, the one where we're doing the trays. But see, I'll just go through and stroke it like this. I can go all the way back. There's a little spot right there I missed with varnish. I'll just go add some and work it right through there again. And even though this is over here is starting to dry up, I can come right back through it again, even as it's drying here, and just keep leveling it and pushing it around. Usually I let the varnish rest after I put it on for a little bit because it self-levels and gets rid of all the brush marks, but sometimes you just want to go. So now you can see, you know, if you look out over here on these corners and stuff, you don't see any puddles of it, and it's just leveling out. It'll dry absolutely clear. It'll wake up all the colors and stuff and make them look really pretty. So that'll happen and I'll just keep walking. I work a little area at a time and just keep walking across my canvas. If at any time, if you ever worry about anything, that's where you have your little mister bottle. You can just mist a little water 
and that makes it stroke really easy, but I don't worry about it. You know, I could come back here and mist some of this back in through here, and you can see right there where my brush is. It's just leveling it all out again. The varnish accepts the water back into it right away, and you don't need to worry about it. But, uh, you know, it's just, it's really great stuff. It's just, I just work a little bit at a time across. And on your first coat like this, it is uh, a little bit more difficult because the surface is completely matte and it wants to drink all the water out of it right away. But if you just say to yourself, oh, don't worry about it because even if it dries, I can still keep coming on onto it, then you'll be fine. It's, it's, you really can't mess, mess it up, especially if you have a little spray bottle here. The only way you can make, up, uh, make a mistake with it is if you use too much. Don't use too much. A lot of people use too much varnish. They think laking it on is going to be is going to be, you know, the best way to do something. Just lake it on and let it level out. No, that's with the older varnishes and stuff. The newer varnishes are made to be put, like this one is made to be put on very thin because it's very powerful. And you'll see today in a lot of products. Go read the products, the application of a lot of today's products. They always say two thin coats is, are better than one thick coat. That is so very true. Two thin coats of something are much better because you get a better curing. You get a better leveling uh, of it. So, you know, I always tell everybody, don't put stuff on thin. It's better, I mean thick. It's better to put thin. Now, back down here with all this talking, this little edge right here is dry. Here's where there's no varnish. I don't need to worry about it. I just come right into here and just keep going. If you're at all worried about it, there's nothing wrong here, but if you're at all worried about it, just give it a quick little mist that adds just a little water and causes it to the varnish to move a little quicker under the pressure of my brush. Or if your brush starts to get a little sticky, mine isn't, but if it starts to feel a little sticky. Now, I like it to be a little sticky. I like the little bit of drag. I like to, when that happens, I lighten the pressure of my brush and I go back over the varnish and, you know, you always feel good because you want to manipulate the varnish a little bit. But even back here where it's starting to dry still, you know, and it's ta and it, over here where it is dry, I can go right back up over this like this and just kind of, if there's any kind of puddles or level it off or something like that. And you can see how it's starting to dry a little clearer here now. Um, you don't always see that uh, that uh, a little bit of cloudy look. That little bit of cloudy look, it just comes from the water, water inside the varnish, and that just dries out. You don't have to worry about it. But I'll put a little bit over here, and I'll continue on down over here. Now, anytime you can dip your brush into a little water, but you see, I don't have to here. I can I push and I work the varnish here. I work that varnish all the way where it starts to get draggy, where I'm feeling that it's starting to dry. I don't worry about it. Now in the first video I told about, you know, if you're worried about your surface, there's a lot of people worry about their, their surfaces and stuff. You can always give it, one of the easiest products we have to put on is the multi-surface sealer. You can always give your uh, canvas or your tray or something, a coat of multi-surface sealer and then the varnish just slides over that surface really easy. But I like to show you that's not necessary. And But the multi-surface sealer is a urethane product. It is a varnish though. It does work nice but you can see it's not necessary especially on a big canvas like this. I can just keep working this and working this here you can hear my brush going over the surface and then I as I'm going to go through any kind of little smoothing I just lift the pressure of my brush like this and I go through and I kind of even out the varnish a little bit anywhere like that but you can see here as I, as I hold this here that it's giving it uh, you know just such a pretty coat you can see the glare there you don't see any any uh, brush marks or any of that kind of stuff on there and at any time, if you say you find a little thick area right in there or something like that, there isn't one. But let's just say I, there was one right there. I would just mist a little water into that area and just go right through it. And it might make the varnish just a touch cloudy, but that'll dry out. And just kind of manipulate it like that, manipulate it through. And uh, it will be, you know, 
will level all out. Just don't use too much varnish. Spread it out. Work it pretty hard, okay? And um, it always it always works. Don't be afraid of it. You know, I can come back right where I'm working this thing right here, like I showed you in the video, and put my hand in it where I leave a little handprint like that. And all I have to do, don't worry about it. All I have to do is just mist it with a little water and come back like this. And boom, that little handprint is gone right there. Bye-bye. Right out of that. It is a uh, really wonderful product. Now, on the um, other one, on the tray video where I was watching that, I showed some of the, the problems with it. And uh, we'll put, we'll try to put uh, on the uh, website, we'll put these two uh, videos together, the big, this big one here and the tray one. But uh, uh, other places, they might be out separately. But there'll be, there's lots of different ways. I'm going to be showing you how to varnish Doors, large furniture pieces and everything. This varnish is really made for the large furniture pieces because it's a little thicker. So by having it thick like that, it doesn't sag. It doesn't drip down and sag. But we can always just thin it with just a little, and I like to use a little spray bottle or use a little cup of, of water like this and just dip your uh, brush into it, into the water. Now when you're all done, you take your brush over to your sink. This is a beautiful brush. It'll last you for a long, long, long time, but you got to take care of it. You now have a very, very hard product in there. You got to take it over to the sink and you got to wash it real well. I wash it real well with soap and water and for at least five minutes or so, just washing it and washing it and washing it, making sure all that varnish is out of there. And then when I'm all done, I uh, take a little extender medium out onto my palette here and I put some extender medium into it when I'm all done and that's going to make the, uh, the, the uh, varnish brush stay really nice. Now, if I still want to you know varnish like I want to give this a second coat and I give this I'll turn around and give this a second coat and in as soon as it's completely dry here you know in 10 minutes or 30 minutes and stuff um I if I don't want to wash my brush I just put out some extender medium and I dress my brush here into my extender medium like this work that you know sometimes I use my hand but that gets varnish on your hand too and it <laughs> it doesn't come off so easy but uh, I worked that, that extender medium well into this brush and then just set the brush down where you can see it worked in there really, really well into the brush. And that's going to keep the varnish from drying up. So I can come back in, you know, 30 minutes or so and varnish and I haven't had to wash this brush. Sometimes I'll wrap it in a little plastic or something like that. But make sure you work that extender medium in there really well. The ultimate thing is take your brush over to the sink, add some soap, sit down, and wash and wash and wash and rinse these hairs out really, really well. Then when you're done, dress your brush in extender medium, and sometimes I'll wrap it in a paper towel or whatever it is and put it away. But um, they always say that you shouldn't store your brushes when they're wet up like this because it does expand the wood that's in the, the handles there. I haven't had really too much a problem with any of these. These are watercolor brushes, really, so that they're 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 made fantastic. So, um, but you can just leave it down on your palette. It's a beautiful brush. It's a beautiful varnish brush, and you know you can you know I can even come with extender in my brush here. It doesn't hurt the varnish at all. The varnish is really forgiving. Have a good time with it. Just uh, don't apply too much of it. Sometimes I, uh, you know, I'll wipe it all down with my hand or a paper towel. I have other kinds of varnish videos out there, all kinds of different ways that I, I varnish and show you. I show you how to do a French polish with a paper towel. Um, sometimes I use a little rag. Sometimes I use my hand to varnish something. Uh, it's, it's really wonderful. But when you're talking about a big canvas like this, don't worry about the varnish drying up. It's not, you know, the older varnish picked up and rolled, you know, that we made in the 80s and 90s. This doesn't. This just keeps going. All right? It's a fun, fun thing to do. Nice big, so whether you're doing the big um, trolling, uh, you know, the inlet, and when I finished that one up, I gave, I varnished it exactly like I did this one, um, you know, and all of the big ones. My big elk that I did into the classroom, on the online classroom, I did it the same way. Two coats of varnish on those. I don't like to give three because I don't like it to get too much of a shine across the surface or distort. When I'm doing big canvas like this, I like two coats. That's it. And a little bit of highs and lows every once in a while are great for the overall effect of the painting. And I like that. Okay? So I always give just two coats. But you can go three. Start getting more than that, you're going to distort it.
There you go. All right. Look for some of the other varnishing videos that we have out there and have fun. Don't be afraid of it. But if you are a little bit nervous about it, give everything a coat of sealer and then it's all protected and it all works great. And don't use too much. All righty. I'll see you later.